When you expand the octet on the central atom, you clearly get a number of different shapes that are possible. And we could even go further. We could put seven sites on the central atom and get a pentagonal bipyramid or a monocapped octahedron. We can get eight sites on the central atom and end up with a square antiprism. But I think six sites is enough for us. What I want to focus on is how these expanded octets affect the polarity of molecules. Previously, we talked about polarity and we looked at them in terms of either having two, three, or four sites on the central atom. And we said the key for finding polarity is looking for asymmetry. Looking for different elements surrounding the central atom, that was the case in the CH3F. Or looking for lone pairs on the central atom, like on NF3 and H2O. Those were our indications that we had polar molecules. With some of these expanded octets, it's actually possible to have lone pairs on the central atom, but still be symmetric. So when we have five sites on the central atom, we start out with the trigonal bipyramid. We can go to the seesaw shape with one lone pair, and that's polar, it's asymmetric. You can go T-shaped with two lone pairs on the central atom, and that's still polar. But when you get to the linear shape with three lone pairs on the central atom, you actually go back to a symmetric shape. So even though there are lone pairs on the central atom, that's a nonpolar molecule. Likewise, in our octahedral shape, when you get to the square planar shape, when you have lone pairs opposing each other, that's a nonpolar shape, even though you have lone pairs. And again, when you get to the linear molecule with four lone pairs and two bonds, that is also a nonpolar arrangement.